Northwest 10th and Davis in the Pearl District at the Girding Theater. You know, this is the first theater and the only building on the National Historic Register to achieve lead platinum designation. So glad you're with us on Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Ken Ackerman. Let's say you're going on a skiing trip or want to go to Central Oregon. Which way do you take? Which route do you go maybe through Damascus and Boring? Do you go through Gresham? Well, you know, there's a current study underway to try to make that trip a better one, a faster one. Let's talk to Travis Stovall. He's executive director of East Metro Economic Alliance. Thanks for being here. Not a problem, Ken. You know, take Sandy as, as, as a base here. Sandy is getting a lot of money through their businesses because people go through that way. But you're getting opposition from cities who don't want traffic through their area. Well, Ken, one of our, one of our key board members is uh, named Brian Lessler. He always says he's a developer. He always says, he says, good development follows good transportation. And he's right. And the city of Sandy actually sees that. And they, they welcome this concept of bringing traffic through their, through their neighborhoods, through their, their key transport system right through downtown. And we've got some of the same challenges in East County. How do we ensure that we're creating a balance between transport, freight, and economic development, but then also the livability of the region? And right now, Metro is helping us out doing a study of our corridors that actually go from I-84 to Highway 26 to ensure that we've got ad adequate access between there. And part of the challenge, again, is how do we balance that goal of economic development, transportation and freight, but with also the livability. And that's where some of, the, some of the participants in the study are saying, hey, we've got to make sure we keep that at the forefront. Well, you'd know better than anyway, which way is fastest? Which way is fastest? <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, 257th is fastest. There's some been, been improvements over the last few years that have actually made that a, a very good through route. So if I'm going through East County and I'm headed up the mountain or Central Oregon, I'm taking 257. All right, so there is a study underway. How long are we talking into the future that something might be done to, to maybe make this a better trip for everyone? The actual recommendations are going to be due early part of 2012, finalizing the study in probably spring of 2012. And, but then you've got the money issue. Uh, well, you know, what, now that we know the answer, how do we fund whatever we need to fund? As we know, on a national and state level, Funds are, challenge, funds are really challenging to come by these days, mm -hmm. especially for things like transportation and infrastructure. So we don't know necessarily when those actual improvements are going to happen, but it all starts with studying and ensure that we've got the correct routes to improve. You know, challenge is nothing new to folks there in East County because I know you've been trying to get a big aircraft carrier out there, the U.S. It's an aircraft carrier. It's an aircraft carrier. USS Ranger. USS how, Ranger. How long have you been going after the USS Ranger as a museum? We've actually been at this for roughly about three years. It's actually the USS Ranger Foundation that's actively doing it, but East Metro Economic Alliance is a partner there to ensure that we can get that there. It's, it's going to be the largest floating museum in the, in the world. And so it's really an opportunity to take a look at the museum, disaster preparedness, some action, you know, a tourist attraction with retail and things that support that. So it's, it's, it really is a, a large project to look at getting here. And there's uh, things that are, that are, we're looking at to ensure that it can get here. Uh, some challenges that we do have to overcome, but. The railroad bridge for The one? railroad bridge for one. It's, it's, it's uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe's railroad bridge and the ship is too wide to actually get through the opening. So what do you do? So the engineers tell us it's a, dis it's a, it's a, it's a dismantle and then a rebuild, which should supposedly happen within 24 to 48 hours. You can dismantle a bridge to make it wide enough for an aircraft carrier to go through and put it back together. Well, in 40, I can't, but they say that the, the engineers say they can. And, but it's, it's the Amtrak bridge, and so right. it's, it, would, it would certainly slow down traffic. Uh, for, for the Amtrak train. So it would have to be well coordinated. We're looking at a 2015 date before this is before this is up and running. So we've got some time to plan for it, but we will need public support in ensuring that we have the opportunity to do that dismantle and rebuild. So you say it's a multifunctional uh, uh, attraction. It's its own city. It's going to have its own zip code. I mean, <laughs> this thing is how, how long? It's, uh, I, 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 that's a good okay. question. <laughs> I heard, I heard, what, three football fields? I mean, it can't be Three football fields. Three football fields. Unbelievable. All right, and the channel, deep enough. Channel's deep enough. That right. is correct. I say, I, I give it my stamp of approval. Excellent. We All appreciate right. that. Travis Stovall, thank you very much for updating us on the east side. And we want to thank you for being here as well. Santa Land Diaries and a Christmas Story. You can get tickets at that box office right there through December. From the crew here, make it a great day, everybody.